This is a diesel particulate filter. It's heavy, it's expensive, and depending on who you ask, it's either saving the planet or robbing you of horsepower. But how does a DPF actually work? What happens when it gets clogged? And how can a clean tune increase your power output without harming your emission system? I'll show you all of that and how the quality of your engine oil can increase your DPF's lifespan. And we're even gonna cut this thing open and show you how it works. I'm Eric, this is Entry Level. Let's get into it. This is Banks Entry Level. Presented by Amsoil, the leader in synthetics. Let's start with the elephant in the room. And that's the fact that some modern diesel owners make horsepower by deleting the emission system entirely. The fact is, tampering with any emissions components for any reason is prohibited by the Environmental Protection Agency and the Clean Air Act of 1970. Not just here in California, but in all 50 states. Whether you agree with that or not, those are the rules for keeping diesels on the road here in the US. The parts we make are designed to work on any truck, and that means working with the emission system and not against it. In many cases, a truck with our tuner will make more horsepower than the same truck with the emission system deleted. Taking a sawzall to your exhaust is no replacement for good engineering. If you want to make power that is both road usable and road legal, that emissions equipment has got to stay in place. If you want to know about making more power while staying emissions compliant, be sure to subscribe to the channel. We've always got lots of good info and new products headed your way. But for now, let's talk about what these emissions actually are. To understand the emission system, we need to take a look at the engine exhaust gas. And I'm not talking about the stuff that comes out of here. I mean the stuff that comes out of here. Once air and fuel combust in the engine, the resulting gases and microscopic solids make up our exhaust gas. Diesel combustion creates carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide, which are common for any type of combustion engine. Diesel combustion also produces more oxides of nitrogen, more commonly known as NOx. And any unburnt fuel goes into the exhaust as unburnt hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons are combustible compounds made up of hydrogen and carbon. This one in particular has three carbon molecules and eight hydrogen molecules. Hydrogen, carbon, hydrocarbon although we commonly refer to this one as propane. Propane, butane, and methane are all hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons are the world's main energy source and are found in crude oil, natural gas, and coal. But the reason these are even found in your exhaust is that the combustion process isn't perfect. Lean and rich areas are created in cylinder as the fuel can't get everywhere evenly. And as a result, these unburnt hydrocarbons are now a part of your exhaust. In a recent video, Gail showcases how the new Duramax L5P is combating these lean areas with a new piston shape. Less lean areas means more efficient combustion and more power. On top of all these gases, solids also form from hydrocarbons, sulfur oxide in the fuel, and metal in the oil. This microscopic solid matter is called particulates. Particulate matter is classified by size. PM stands for particulate matter, and the number that follows denotes the largest particulates in that category. PM10 particles are 10 microns or smaller. These particulates are small enough to be inhaled and lodged in lung tissue, causing coughing and irritation. Or, over time, they can build up as a deposit on your lungs. PM2.5 particulates are small enough that they can enter the bloodstream through the lung tissue and even reach the brain. And according to the California Air Resource Board, the compounds these particulates contain are known to damage DNA and cause cancer. In other words, this stuff can kill you. It doesn't happen overnight, but inhaling particles this small can dramatically shorten your lifespan. Some particles in exhaust gas are so small they're invisible to the naked eye. But just because you don't see black smoke doesn't mean these emissions aren't dangerous. To put these particulates in perspective, this sheet of paper is around 100 microns thick. We're talking about particulates 40 times smaller than this. Gail Banks grew up in LA during the hot riding era, so he's an expert on both horsepower and air pollution. His goal in this industry is to keep the first one high and the second one low. Here are the emission systems as they appear on a modern turbo diesel. They are arranged differently depending on the manufacturer and use case, but always start with in-cylinder emissions reduction. The most common form of in-cylinder emissions reduction 
is the Exhaust Gas Recirculation System, or EGR. The EGR helps reduce NOx production by siphoning off inert exhaust gas, which is cooled and then brought back into the intake manifold to lower peak combustion temperature and low boost conditions. The first after-treatment component is the Diesel Oxidation Catalyst, or DOC. The DOC uses passive heat from the engine and rare metals like palladium and platinum to oxidize carbon monoxide, turning it into carbon dioxide. These reactions also break apart hydrocarbons into hydrogen and carbon, then oxidize those to create more carbon dioxide and water vapor. The Selective Catalyst Reduction Chamber, or SCR, uses a fluid that contains around 32% urea called diesel exhaust fluid, or DEF. DEF promotes reactions with the NOx and the ammonia in the urea. That ammonia breaks down into nitrogen and hydrogen, and that hydrogen combines with the oxygen from the NOx to form water vapor. Diesel emissions fluid is one more consumable you have to put in your truck, but to balance it out, SCRs actually increase fuel economy. Without SCRs, all the NOx reduction would have to be done by the EGR via inert gas in the cylinder, which isn't combustible. So you get less EGR and more complete combustion. You're buying more DEF, but less diesel. And finally, we have the diesel particulate filter. And here we have our DPF. It's a high density filtration system for solid particulates in the exhaust flow. This particular unit is a combined DPF and SCR from a 2016 Duramax LML. So let's open this thing up and see what's inside. Before we get into it, I've never actually cut open a DPF in person, and I don't know how much of those tiny little particulates are gonna escape and potentially get into my lungs, so just in case. Inside this DPF is an extruded ceramic substrate we call the brick. The walls are low micron filters that catch particulates before they flow through. The layers are arranged so that the exhaust gas has to pass through the walls of the substrate in order to flow out. It's like a maze. The reason for this design is to get the maximum surface area to catch as much particulate matter as you can. Here you can see how the DPF filters out particulates. Think of these straight rows like traffic lanes. The soot-filled exhaust moves down one lane, and because that lane ends at the back of the DPF, the gases are forced to move over to the open lane. The walls of the DPF filter are porous enough for the gases to get through, but not the particulates. So the soot and ash get captured as the exhaust gas exits the DPF. Honestly, mad props to the engineers who designed this thing. Particulates come in two forms, soot and ash. Now, if you're used to barbecues or fireplaces, soot and ash might sound like the same thing, when in reality, they couldn't be more different. Soot is made up of unburnt hydrocarbons. You can think of soot as microscopic charcoal briquettes. So when you heat up fuel in the absence of oxygen, you get soot, or in the case of barbecues, you get one of these. So the more efficient combustion you have, the more hydrocarbons are burnt in cylinder and the less soot you'll have. So a diesel vehicle with a smoky tune will produce more soot that fills the DPF faster, increases exhaust back pressure, and makes the turbo work harder. So that's why this is the only kind of smoking I do. Soot will start to build up in the DPF, clogging the filter and reducing flow. But luckily, just like charcoal, soot can be burnt off. So all you need is high enough exhaust gas temperatures and you can clean your DPF all out. Soot is made up of various hydrocarbons that all burn up at different temperatures. Some hydrocarbons like propylene can be fully burnt off by 600 degrees Fahrenheit. To be sure that you've gotten rid of all the soot though, temps would need to reach about 1112 degrees Fahrenheit. If the exhaust gas gets into this temperature range naturally while driving, we call that passive regeneration or regen. Work trucks during long shifts or trucks hauling through hills and mountains will often build up enough heat to burn soot about as fast as they make it. If enough soot is being burned off, the DPF is not being filled and the passive regen is all you need. And if passive regen does not clear soot quickly enough and the DPF gets too clogged, the vehicle will perform what's known as an active regen. An active regen is a process to burn off all the soot captured in the DPF all at once. As the DPF fills with soot over time, the obstructed exhaust flow creates a slight pressure drop. Pressure sensors before and after the DPF let the ECM know the percentage of soot load accumulated, and when the soot level gets too high, the active regen starts. For an active regen, the vehicle uses extra fuel. Essentially, 
that's an active region. And that's what's happening inside your DPF. Most trucks don't actually tell you when it's time for a regen. So I've got our iDash data monster hooked up displaying regen status, soot load percentage, EGTs, and exhaust back pressure. An active regen can take up to 20 minutes of steady driving or sitting at idle. And during that time, your fuel economy will drop and your power output will be limited to save the EGTs from getting too high and damaging your engine or your turbo or the DPF itself. Active regions do cause more wear over time. The effect is relatively minor and would take a long time to do any real damage, but if you're planning on keeping your truck for a while, the fewer active regions it sees, the longer it will last. An active region will clean out any unburnt hydrocarbons in the DPF. But unfortunately, an active region can't clean out particulates that cannot be burnt. I'm talking about ash. This sulfated ash is a solid matter that cannot be burnt away. In comparison to soot, there's very little ash buildup in your DPF, but over time it can build up and clog your filter. On average, about every 500 to 1,000 miles, your DPF will fill with soot and need to be burnt away with a regen. In comparison, it can take 100,000 miles or more for your DPF to fill with ash. Ash comes from two main sources. The first are sulfur oxides in diesel fuel solidifying into ash, which is why most regions now use ultra-low sulfur diesel fuel. The second is an additive in engine oil called zinc dialkyl phosphate. Well, we just call it ZDDP. ZDDP is an essential additive in engine oil that coats metal surfaces to protect them. Now, in a perfect world, oil would never make its way into the exhaust system, but there are three main ways that it does. The first way oil can reach your DPF is via the positive crankcase ventilation valve or PCV valve. Now, some people choose to delete the PCV system and vent the pressure to atmosphere, but apart from getting vaporized oil all over your nice engine bay, it's also illegal to vent your crankcase to atmosphere. Venting to atmosphere might also affect your seals. The oil cap, for example, has a seal that's designed to work under vacuum, not under positive pressure. So if you vent to atmosphere, you might get some new leaks. The best way to avoid this is to keep the PCV system and use a high-grade, low-volatility, synthetic-based oil that has very little evaporation. The next weak spot is in the cylinder. Wear on the piston rings and the cylinder wall liner will create gaps for oil to get into the combustion chamber. Not only does this burn oil, but since the leak works both ways, soot will start to contaminate your engine oil as well. This wear is made worse by oil aeration. Aeration is when air bubbles form in the oil as it's beaten and whipped by the rotating components. You don't want this because oil is a lubricant, air is not. Finally, we have the valve seals. As the valve stem moves in the valve guide, it is lubricated by oil. The valve seal controls the lubrication of the valve stem and prevents the oil from getting down into the cylinder. An oil with seal conditioner additives will keep those seals fresh and able to function longer. And if you're wondering where you can find oil with all these additives to keep your DPF safe, Amsoil's got you covered. We use Amsoil products in our race engines, military engines, and everything we're doing in our install bay. So now you know what diesel exhaust gas is composed of, how the DPF works, and how choosing the right oil can improve the life of your DPF. But what about tuning? Well, the secret is the air-fuel ratio. Turbo diesels with variable geometry turbos are uniquely equipped to operate at a wide range of air-fuel ratios, or AFR. So while gasoline vehicles operate from around 12 to 1 to 15 to 1 AFR, turbo diesels can operate from 15 to 1 to as lean as 60 to 1. Because of this, some tuners don't think you need to worry about maintaining AFR in diesels, and they just dump in more fuel to make more power. But just because an engine can run in those conditions, doesn't mean that it's running well. Adding fuel without adding air is how you get an inefficient and smoky tune. Even if you think it makes more power on the dyno, on the road, you get to use that power for less time. We tested our Derringer inline tuner against the Edge Pulsar on the Duramax L5P. And what we found was that the Pulsar put the vehicle into regen sooner and more often than our Derringer. Here's a graph that shows the same engine with two different tunes, and the soot load as the DPF fills and regens over 3,000 miles. The engine with the dirty tune has to go into regen sooner because it's producing more soot. During every regen, the engine's power is reduced. But the regens take the same amount of time for both engines. So fewer regens means more time at your truck's full power. By the time both engines have done 30,000 miles, the engine with the dirty tune has done four times as many regens, 
With all that time and regen, the Dirty Tune gives you less overall horsepower, and over time, that DPF is able to clean itself out less and less because of ash deposits that can't be burnt away. So not only does a Dirty Tune make less overall horsepower by putting you into regen quicker, over time it also makes your regen less effective. And the other thing we measured with fuel-only tuners is that if you're at full throttle for more than 10 to 15 seconds, the factory ECM will pull power as the exhaust gas temperatures rise above the factory limit. This is called a D-rate, and it's how the engine protects itself from damage. High oil temps, high coolant temps, and high EGTs can all trigger a D-rate. When the engine D-rates, it reduces fuel delivery into the cylinder, reducing power. No matter how much horsepower you can get with a fuel-only tune, a D-rate will leave you with less horsepower than stock until those temps come back down into a safe range, and you'll still be filling your DPF quicker than a clean tune. Tuning by only adding fuel means increased soot load, increased hydrocarbons, increased production of NOx, and reduced fuel economy. To maintain a proper air-fuel ratio, increase horsepower, and load up the DPF as little as possible, you need to tune with air and fuel. This means a tuner needs to adjust both the fuel delivery and the incoming air by adjusting the vanes on the variable geometry turbo. Proper air-fuel ratio means less NOx is produced in cylinder, and that means less EGR is needed to keep in-cylinder emissions down. A smart inline tuner knows when we can use power, and in our tuners, we achieve this by constantly monitoring the ECM via the OBD port. With an inline tuner that's connected to the OBD port, the tuner can see throttle pedal position, coolant temp, trans slip, DPF regen status. We can even compensate for high altitudes by pulling the incoming air pressure off of the mass airflow sensor to avoid overfueling. All of this means that a well-tuned truck will go longer in between regens than a truck with a fuel-only tuner. And not only do you have a higher peak horsepower, but you have access to that higher peak horsepower for longer. And more time with full power isn't the only benefit. With fewer regens, your DPF will also last longer. When the DPF was first introduced in the mid-2000s, it was merely a band-aid to get diesel vehicles to meet emission standards. Today, the DPF and all other components of the emission system are part of the design of the vehicle. And in the 1970s, when catalytic converters were first introduced, gas vehicles took a massive hit on stock power and didn't recover for about a decade in most models. And today, DPS received similar hate, but stock power offerings never really changed. And now, diesel trucks are making a thousand pound-feet of torque right off the showroom floor. So if you tune with the DPF in mind, you can make more power while producing a road legal level of emissions. According to the Department of Transportation, the average carbon monoxide output from light-duty diesel trucks has dropped 90% since 2000, and NOx has dropped over 80%. And even with that reduction in emissions, trucks are making nearly double the horsepower they did 20 years ago. So the DPF and the rest of the emission system has made a big difference. The biggest one though, is that without the DPF, light duty diesel trucks might have been regulated out of existence. When you look for your next inline tuner, be sure to ask yourself, is it tuning with air and fuel? Does it know what's going on with my ECM? Is it keeping my engine safe? You know, Eric, we already make a product that covers all those bases. Our Derringer inline tuner. The Banks Derringer makes that all possible without smoking out your DPF. Be sure to like and subscribe for more entry-level videos with Eric and more in-depth analysis videos with me. Thanks for watching and see you next time.